Although still, honestly, I kind of want to be one of those people that wears sunglasses all the time. I don't think you do because I I've met those people. <laughs> So Matthew, I think we were going to talk about remote usability testing. Or just remote everything, right? All right. Not Bring it all on. things, but like, I think I do want to talk about testing, but also I think a lot of the things that we plan to talk about can be applied to just remote research in general. If you're just interviewing people remotely, that kind of thing. Sure, sure, sure. Um, literally mean everything. That's where I thought you were going, and I was curious to see where you led us yeah. <laughs> in this conversation. So where would you like to start? Well, I think We're I would different. like, as, as usual, and you're not going to be surprised by me saying this, I think I would like to start by setting a little context. For the most part, I want to focus on moderated, where the researcher is an active participant in the testing of the research. Go. <laughs> And scene. And scene. All right. Good night, everybody. <laughs> so we know Matthew prefers moderated, which yeah. I do too. I, am I inferring that correctly? You, you infer and I imply <laughs> uh, the same concept. So, so let's talk about moderated remote usability testing. Okay. See how many more words we can jumble in this. I know. This subject. All these adjectives. That makes it much more interesting. Um, Moderated so, remote generative usability. Yes. God, I got to get my I know. X. Okay. So let's start at the beginning. Okay. If, if, if you're working on one of these projects and yeah. this is method that you've chosen to uh, mm -hmm. get, do your study. Right. Where do you start? Well, and you're going to, you're going to kick me again, but like, I think I'd, like to briefly talk about why you might choose to do this. Okay. And this is the beginning. This is that's still the beginning. Right. But why you might choose to do remote people who fit the profile, who are the potential customers or the potential users may be in places that are either difficult for you to get to in a timely manner or difficult to get to because of budgetary concerns. And so it's flat out undesirable. Right. Yeah, you just don't want to travel. Right. <laughs> For whatever reason. I mean, right. you know, I, I think it usually ends up being a time and budget thing. And I think that that's why doing a moderated remote session can be really helpful. Right. So. But what are some of the, the potential risks of doing it remote as opposed to in person? Well, obviously, if you're not in situ, as the professionals say, no, they don't. No one say that. No one say that. You're fired. <laughs> if you're not in context on site, you miss out on a higher level of fidelity of understanding. You might you might be looking at the, at some slice of interaction or experience, but to be able to truly understand that, it is sometimes better to be in context and and watch it happening so you can say, oh, I can see how their physical environment is impacting their ability to do this. And you don't necessarily get that on remote, uh, remote testing or remote interviews. You're quite literally have a very small window right, into right. their life or their work. And you definitely have those moments, you know, where I've had those moments of hearing, hey, can I pause because my baby's crying? Hmm. And I've just got to go. It'll take me a few minutes to, to get them back to sleep. So one, the answer is, of course, of course, go take care of that. And two, oh, not literally exactly like this, but this is what life is going to be like for this person and people like this person. We can't imagine the users of product A are going to be like, all right, I'm going to sit down and I am going to focus on completing this task and nothing's going to stop me at all because realistically that never happens. And so we do want to see what is that experience like when life interrupts? How easy it is for them to get back on track? And I think you see that more when you're in context, but you do still get some of it with remote testing. It's just, um, I wouldn't say it's a low fidelity, it's just a bit lower. Because so often you still get to see some of their environment and that sometimes they even walk you around 
and show you things. So you get some of it, but it's just not as robust. So safe to say that it's not our preference to do remote. In many cases, we prefer to be in context when, when appropriate, when available. Yeah, I would say my decision tree is I want to talk to the people who are most represent who we're trying to target. And then I say, what is the easiest way to get to those people? What is the, and, and then pair that with the, what is going to give us the most, the best outcome? Right. That's where I was heading. And try and find that balance. Yep. Because it could be that a remote is enough and it leads you down a path that is positive for the team, positive for the product or service. And I think one of the reasons we wanted to focus on remote is because it does have a, I don't say stigma, but the impression I hear from other people is that it's a little bit scary, it's an unknown. Mm -hmm. um, when I talk to people and tell them I've done remote usability testing, I get a lot of, wow, can you tell me more about that? How, how, right. how did you manage that? What's, what's the logistical uh, setup that you use? Um, I guess it's just a little bit more of an unknown quantity. So. Mm -hmm. I understand that, especially if you don't have any or very little experience doing it, how you could look at it as, wow, is that really going to work? But ultimately, if you can get a setup like what we're doing right here, where we can have a conversation and then if, if we were doing a usability test, we, we would have this conversation where we get to know each other a little bit and I probably have some pre, we're getting going on testing questions to ask you and and then I say, all right, so there's a a little green box, you know, if you wiggle your mouse, this is, I always have to say this, you wiggle your cursor over this, this window we're talking to each other. There's a green share button, click that, and then share your desktop and, and we'll, we'll get started on the usability test. And then you still get to watch them, their facial reactions. You get to obviously see what they're doing on their screen. And so I think it's, it's still valuable stuff. It's kind of like in, in the old school days or, or the school days now, if, if you're still working in a lab, where you've got an observer's room, except you're in the observer's room, but you can still communicate directly with the person doing the test. So there's, there's a level of displacement there, but I don't think it, it ends up being something that you can work around. So once you've selected your participants or your, your segments, let's say, mm. and you've made the decision to do remote, what's next for you as you build out your, your project? That's a good question. It depends. <laughs> Just kidding. It depends, but I have an answer. Okay. So it's, it's kind of the, instead of it depends, let's, let's refer to the if then table. If time is of the essence and depending on the extent to which the, or the robustness or availability of the prototype, if you're testing out a concept, if you're testing out robust software that exists in production, those are all going to be decision points that you're going to have to take into consideration for how you want to plan the test and what technology is going to be able for you to use the test or to, to uh, carry out the test. That's what I mean. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing, you know, we want to test the unboxing of our physical product, you're going to have to mail the participant this product. And you're going to have to wait. And, you know, instructions don't open this yet. <laughs> <laughs> and then they have to let you know that they've received the package. And then you set up a call like this where... Ideally, they can set up their camera or whatever, if they have one, that you can both see the box and their face, and they have to go through the, the unboxing. It's not something that you can always say something like what we're doing now and say, here, click this URL and, and we'll start the test. The it depends part is, you know, what are you testing? What level of fidelity is that thing that you're testing? And what do you hope are some of the outcomes that you achieve from this? Are you just looking for, show me where the bugs are, or are you looking for, will this resonate with people? So let's talk about the people. You mentioned finding the right participants right. early on. So do you do anything different when it's a remote test versus an in-person test as far as recruiting? Not, I would say not for the most part. No. Do you? Now are you, are you would you be doing the recruiting yourself or do you use a, a third party vendor? I do almost all my recruiting myself. Okay. Uh, the times where I find myself reaching out to a third party, a vendor recruiter is when the profile is so specific. Most recently, people 64 and a half to 70 who mm -hmm. are just about to enter Medicare or have only been in it a couple of years. That was a rough profile to try and recruit for. And I reached out to two 
agencies who specialize in recruiting and both of them were like, no, we can't help you. <laughs> That's too specific. But eventually we, we found the people, but it took a long time. There really isn't too much of a difference in how I approach it for in-person versus non-in-person other than where I go to ask. So if it's here in Portland, I might use Craigslist. <clears throat> um, if it's very specifically in other cities, I might use the Craigslist in those other cities. If it's, we just want people whose primary language is English, who are between the ages of 30 and 50 and have some established income level and live in the United States. I just started asking on Twitter or LinkedIn because somebody knows somebody whose aunt knows someone and I've had good success with finding people that way when that when it's very broad. So so for that, I don't see that big of a difference. One, one of the differences I was going to bring up is the difference when you're going, when you're not doing remote, when you're in person, is just the logistics of the travel um, if you're going outside of your city. Oh, I see what you mean. You're in Portland, yeah. let's say you're going to San Francisco to do a study. So it's it's different, potentially more questions. You know, where are you located? Are you available yeah. between these times? For Are you comfortable with people coming to your house or business? Right. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, but I feel like those, I classify those as technical constraints. Mm -hmm, for sure. And so far, I would say, I don't think I've ever run into a situation where we've been going to someone's home or someone's place of work and had anyone say, no, I'm not comfortable with that because you're sort of getting the population that self selects to be part of this kind of thing. Like they enjoy doing this kind of stuff. They may want their $150 gift card, but I, I wish I could share that. I've, I've run into people who have a change of mind. Oh really? Oh yeah. Where they've offered to allow research in their home or business. Mm hmm and day of, day prior, and I say, I'm not comfortable with this. Okay. Um, or, or things come up and it was maybe a little questionable whether they were telling the truth or they were making up an excuse. Right. Um, but then you just drop them. Fun fact, it's much easier and less expensive to recover from a missed session if you're doing it remote than it is if you're doing it in context or in a lab. Oh, exactly. That's what you do. Yeah. It's just to your point, like I have run into that situation where people are more comfortable talking on the phone or a video chat. Yeah. Yeah. I see what you mean. Cause yeah. they're like, they feel safer or just their privacy is more intact. I don't know, but there's a different level of involvement mm -hmm. and commitment from someone to just have a yeah. video chat versus letting a team or you know, two, three, four people. Come right. Together. Right. Yeah. Because it is a weird experience to have at least one person come in who's going to be doing all the talking someone who's probably not going to talk very much and will just be shoving a camera in your face the whole time. Right. Not literally, but depends on the study. <laughs> depends on the study. <laughs> Do you like cameras coming at your face? like this? <laughs> <laughs> Please answer on this Likert scale. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I, I see what you mean about the differences, but I find that for the most part, they're, they're workable, you know, and okay. again, it, it goes down that path of it depends. Like if it's, if it's this, then it's this. Oh, then that means we need to do this. Um, I think ultimately we need to come up with one of those decision trees yeah. that will probably be really convoluted. You touched on one of the, our tenants of every problem has a solution. Yes, right. You just may not like it. <laughs> you may not like it, but there's always, there's always a solution. You just have to find it. Yeah, and I think that's the big thing. Research in general, testing in general, is remaining positive as positive as possible and remaining flexible and resilient there's going to be times where things just do not go well and you just need to shut it down not <laughs> not the whole study but that individuals and you need to go if if that's your thing go grab a beer and go that was terrible that's right. all right Let's do another tomorrow one. <laughs> we're going to do better we can do better that's right it happens it's rare yeah but it is rare but it does happen. And, and I think it pays to be somewhat mentally prepared for the possibility of that happening. Mm -hmm. um, because it, if, especially if it happens when you're in the middle of the interview. Uh, it, right. It you, yeah. you have to have a plan in place.